welcome everybody to this new format and the very first one in this new format this is meant for semester 2 and semester 4 students of the University of Delhi for the current semester so semester 2 and semester 4 of 2020 and the title of the courses are open elective and topics in typology respectively now today's lecture will be on the topic of lexical anaphores and as before I'll be following up another chapter of this book which we have been following namely South Asian languages a syntactic typology by K.V. Subarao published in 2012 by the Cambridge University Press we have uh, covered chapter 2 very basic introduction then chapter 4 5 and 6 so far and today we will be starting with chapter 3 it's a fairly big chapter almost 50 pages the title of the chapter in the book is lexical anaphors and pronouns in South Asian languages question is why pronouns if you're talking about anaphors why pronouns well as we will see through the course of this lecture that at least there are two reasons in some TB languages for example Ao and Teniedie the pronouns and the anaphors are of the same form and the second perhaps the more important reason is that in Dravidian and other language families we will see that the anaphors are really made up of reduplicated forms of pronominals so pronouns automatically become you know part of any discussion on lexical anaphors and this is a special property of uh, south asian languages and more on this topic as we go along now the topics covered in this chapter in the book for our purpose we can group it into two groups and I'll call one as basic and the other as advanced the advanced is more directed towards semester 4 students those who have opted for topics in typology course the basic course is common for both so the basic course as you can see in the handout are South Asian specific features mostly addressed to semester 2 students and there are three topics there anaphors with nominative or non-nominative subjects in antecedents secondly verbal anaphors and thirdly scrambling and binding there is a typo here it should be binding now the first topic anaphors with nominative and non-nominative subjects as antecedents is partly theoretical but mostly typological and of interest because we have just finished before the break discussing in three or four lectures uh, the topic of non-nominative subject constructions in South Asian languages secondly verbal anaphors which is again a very South Asian language specific phenomena and I'll talk more about that and thirdly scrambling um, scrambling is something perhaps many of you are not familiar with although I have mentioned it a few times in the class and here is an example of scrambling number one A and B these examples are from Bangla you can construct an equivalent example in your language as well let me read this out 1a ami boita porechi i book classifier have read i have read the book this is the so called standard or default um, canonical word order in most of the south asian languages namely subject object and verb however in these languages you can also change the order so only one change is shown here in 1b boita ami porechi here book the direct object 
has been moved to the front of the sentence and it precedes the subject. So the word order now is object, subject and verb. This is the phenomenon of scrambling and as you would have guessed, um, there are many other orders possible. This is a very small sentence, but if you take a slightly longer sample, for example, a ditransitive sentence, you will get many more orders. There is some variation in the freedom or the degree of freedom of uh, scrambling in uh, various languages in South Asia, but one could say that more or less almost all languages of South Asia uh, very clearly show this phenomenon. One question that arises with respect to scrambling perhaps is uh, are there any difference between the um, canonical order SOV and any non-canonical order for example in this case OSV. Well there are differences apart from the difference in word order. There are differences in perhaps in prosody but also in meaning or meaning as broadly construed and this is not a new topic. This has been going on for almost a century. Whether there is a meaning difference at least in terms of information content of 1A and 1B or any such pairs or whether this is um, uh, example where uh, there is not much difference. <clears throat> then there is this question of whether this is a syntactic movement or just a stylistic change of word order. Uh, to make it more specific, uh, in this example in 1B where the direct object boita has moved in front of the sentence, the syntactic question that arises is where exactly it has moved to. Because we know from our basic syntax that the highest point or the leftward point would be the subject position or at most other topicalized position. However, topicalization we know has a very clear meaning. Whereas in scrambling, we do not necessarily get a topicalized meaning. So the question remains, what is the syntactic position of a scrambled entity? Whether it's a targeted position, that is a predetermined position, or is it an adjunction? Then of course there is uh, the whole history of um, scrambling uh, at least since 1985 since Mamoru Saito's article in Linguistic Inquiry in 1985 and over the years there have been various ways of looking at it and it is a topic especially of interest to linguists working on South Asian languages for the very reason that it's a very uh, common feature of South Asian languages but also for the reason that a lot of work in at least some of the Indo-Aryan languages and some of the Dravidian languages have taken place in the domain of formal syntax. <clears throat> now let us move on to the uh, a little bit of discussion about the advanced topics. These are the topics with some theoretical implications, mostly addressed, as I said earlier, to semester four students of topics in typology, but will be discussed in the common class for everybody. And these are four topics. Number one, verbal anaphors and implicational universals. I will talk about this more in the next lecture. Then the connection between agreement and binding, especially with respect to blocking effect. Then long distance binding, another typical phenomena found in many languages, but also in South Asian languages. And binding theory as applied to South Asian languages. Now, these topics 
all have been discussed in the book in several different sections. So for example, within the uh, so-called basic topics, we have a discussion of non-nominative subjects in section 3.5 and 3.6. Then we have discussion of verbal anaphors in section um, 3.5 and we have discussion of scrambling in section 3.11 okay. uh, within the advanced topics discussion about verbal anaphors already uh, mentioned uh, for the basic topics and then there's discussion of the diatransitives and verbal anaphors in the same section. Then long distance binding in section 3.10. Then binding theory also in 3.10. And we have examples in 3.8 and 3.7 as well. So um, the last topic, binding theory as applied to South Asian languages, we'll see um, whether the um, conclusion arrived at in the chapter holds for some of the languages. Um, we'll see examples from Oriya and Bangla or Malayalam or any other language that is spoken in the class. We'll take it up and um, examine this conclusion.